In the days leading up to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there were few Vladimir Putin would sit next to. One was his neighbor. President Alexander Lukashenko watched on as tens of thousands of Russian troops were welcomed onto Belarusian soil for joint large-scale military drills. He assured his nation the troops would return to Russia. But in the coming weeks, most of them would pour across the border to invade Ukraine. Then, just days into Russia's deadly attack, Lukashenko held a national referendum to scrap its nuclear-free zone, effectively paving the way for Putin to deploy nuclear weapons on Belarusian soil. The Ukrainian government claims Belarus has already sent troops into Ukraine, a claim Belarus denies and the US says it can't verify. But resistance is growing in Lukashenko's nation, prompting some Belarusians to join the fight on their own. Up to 20 Belarusian nationals are joining Ukrainian defences every day. Belarus has been heavily sanctioned by the UK, US and EU for its role in aiding Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And today the European Commission announced further measures, freezing transactions with three of the country's major banks. And now, isolated from the rest of the world, with a weakened economy, there's little direction for Lukashenko to turn, but further into Putin's pocket. Well, earlier I was joined by the exiled leader of Belarus's democratic opposition, Sviatlana Sikhanovskaya. I began by asking her if she thought Lukashenko is turning Belarus into a puppet state. Absolutely. He is paying to Kremlin for the support of Lukashenko after fraudulent election 2020. And now he's giving our soil for uh, attacking uh, Russian troops attacking Ukraine. How do you feel seeing Russian troops invading Ukraine from your country? We have to divide Belarusian regime and Belarusian people. Belarusian people are against this war. We don't want to fight against our brothers and sisters Ukrainians, and Belarusian people uh, don't want to be involved into this uh, occupational invasion. But because Lukashenko now is a complice uh, of uh, of Kremlin, he uh, has to he is on the short leash. You know, he uh, has to fulfill what he is ordered. Uh, and it's important to understand that it's not the will of Belarusian people to participate. And uh, Belarusian people don't have to be punished because one mad person uh, uh, decided to be dragged into this war. But if, if this war grows um, and Belarusian troops are ordered to join this fight by Lukashenko, do you think they would do it? According to our inside information, uh, Belarusian troops uh, had to cross... Uh, Belarusian Ukrainian border already last week, but they didn't do, they didn't do this, and I suppose it's because of massive uh, attack, a media attack on our soldiers. Uh, we ask them not to go on Ukrainian territory because they don't, we want, don't want our army to be enemies to Ukrainian people. We communicated to mothers of soldiers and officers, asking them, don't send uh, your children, your uh, fathers you know, to, to be killed on the territory. So you are responsible for your country, not for one person. I don't know if uh, this order will be given in the future by Lukashenko's regime to our soldiers, but I hope if it is so, they will not fulfill it. What more broadly do you think the international community should be doing now? Should it be listening to the Ukrainian demands to close the skies? I think that a democratic world uh, should do everything possible to stop this war and do everything possible to support Ukraine in this war for uh, Ukraine uh, don't feel abandoned. And uh, as for my country, uh, Lukashenko shares full responsibility for uh, this invasion because from our land, uh, maternity hospitals are, uh, are bombed. Uh, Ukrainian cities are bombed from our land. And uh, I think that all the uh, sanction policy that is shown by the democratic world towards uh, Kremlin, it, uh, uh, Lukashenko should share. But just economic war? No, nothing beyond that? Uh, economic war, uh, full isolation of uh, the regime and support of people, support of civil society. Three pillars. D do you think this 
has crushed the democracy movement in Belarus or hastened the end of Lukashenko? You know, for a year and a half, Belarusian people are fighting against the regime for release of political prisoners, for new elections, and we built organizations, we built a lot of initiatives that now are helping Ukrainian people. Our men uh, who had to flee Belarus because of repressions now are joining the Ukrainian army. Our volunteers uh, who helped political prisoners now are helping to Ukrainian refugees. So uh, we are moving forward. We are moving forward together with Ukrainians and we understand that fate of Ukraine and fate of Belarus are deeply interconnected. We have spoken in the past about the direct threats to your own life and that sense of insecurity that you must feel. Now that we have seen very boldly what Putin is prepared to do, has that sense of your direct threat gone up? Uh, I may understand that... Uh, risk to my life uh, is increasing from day to day, but I can't stop anyway. You know, my husband is there, thousands of political prisoners are there, people are dying in Ukraine, and it's just your obligation to be where you are, not thinking about yourself. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks.